Summer is on its way in the Northern Hemisphere. Let's talk about what that means for you as a runner. Hello geeks and welcome back to Running Geek Girl. My name is Heather and I am glad you are here today. So in the Northern Hemisphere, it is getting to be summer and the temperatures are starting to go up. And here in the South where I live, super hot and super humid all summer, triple digit temperatures. So does this mean that as a runner, I'm going to have to move everything into the treadmill or maybe even cut out workouts for the summer? Not necessarily. Let's talk a little bit about how to handle hotter temperatures for you while you are running this summer. Now, if you don't want to have to go indoors and run on the treadmill all summer long, which is definitely an option, and I know for me, it's not always a terrible option because I can get caught up on TV shows, YouTube, and uh, different podcasts, but if you would rather run outside, then you are going to have to acclimate to the heat. So let's talk a little bit about what that means for you as a runner. Number one, the first thing that you need to do is decide that you can acclimate to the heat. Now, a lot of times if you say that you're bad at something, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You are not a terrible dancer, you are not a terrible cook, and you are not bad at running in the heat. So the first step is start practicing positive mental imaging related to the heat. Start telling yourself that you like hot weather fake it until you make it. Some amount of athletic performance is always going to be psychological. So if you take control of your mental game ahead of time, then you're going to find that what your body does is going to follow along. Do keep in mind, however, that in order to fully acclimate to hotter temperatures, it will usually take between seven and 14 days. So remember to be patient with yourself while you are telling yourself that yes, you can do this. Number two, keep track of the humidity. I know that where I live here in the South, humidity is always a huge Huge issue during the summers. Check your humidity levels because high humidity is going to keep sweat from evaporating on your skin, which is your body's natural way of trying to cool itself off. This can make you overheat just a little bit faster. So if you're choosing to run outdoors, make sure that you are finding shady spots that you can run through and avoid running during the peak sunny hours. This is usually going to be in the midday area. And make sure that you are dressing appropriately for the weather, making sure that you are wearing light layers of synthetic fabric that are going to wick away moisture. Number three, slow down. Now, running in the heat can be really stressful for your body. So if there is a heat index that is over 80 degrees, a lot of times your body is not able to handle it quite as easily. So you're going to save your key workouts when you have better weather conditions like cooler days or early in the morning. This makes sure that you can maintain your speed without overdoing it and overtaxing your body. You may wanna do some of your easy runs during the warmer part of the day. The general rule is going to be about 60 to 100 minutes of moderate exercise in hot conditions for a couple of weeks every other day, and you'll start to adapt to the heat a little more easily. Just make sure that you are slowing the pace down and keeping things easy. Now, these hot weather runs, even at an easy pace, are still going to feel like a lot of work. So don't expect to feel fantastic after your run and make sure that you are giving yourself plenty of time to recover before you go out again. Number four, and I cannot stress this enough, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Now I know there are some runners that really don't like to carry water on a run, but when it's hot, you've got to hydrate. You may even want to prehydrate in order to fight off muscle fatigue. You don't want to intentionally dehydrate yourself as part of your training. This is a time when you need to be replacing all of the sweat that you are losing. And that's why it's also important to make sure that you are replacing electrolytes because it's not only water that's coming out of your skin, you've got salt and other chemicals that are coming out that your body desperately needs in order to keep going. So make sure that you are looking into electrolyte replacement placements. A couple of my favorites are Element and Tailwind. So I'll have uh, links to their websites down in the description below if you would like to check them out. But there are plenty of different brands that you can choose from. The general rule is going to be taking in two ounces per mile to keep cramps away and to keep yourself adequately hydrated. And number five, keep an eye on your heart rate. I know a lot of people that are very much into tracking their heart rate over the course of their run. And maybe this is something that is new to you, something that you haven't thought about tracking before. Now, this is something that you can easily do with a monitor or a smartwatch, make it more accurate results with a heart rate strap or going around your chest. However, you can get a basic idea just from wearing one on your wrist. It's just not gonna be quite as accurate. Now a very, very basic 
basic way to calculate your target heart range is going to be 220 minus your age multiplied by 64% and 76%. That will give you your range for moderate. And then for vigorous physical activity, 220 minus your age multiplied by 77% and 93%. And again, this is not an exact science at all, okay? This just gives you a basic general range of where your heart rate can be. This doesn't take into account medications that you're on. It's not going to take into account any injuries that you may be struggling with. There's a lot that is still going to be in play, but if you are brand new to heart rate training and you just need a place to start, then this will give you a basic idea of where you need to go. Also, I will have a link down in the description for those of you who are not into doing all the math where you can just type in your age and it will give you some basic ranges for you to look at. Again, not a hugely exact science, but it will give you a range to start with. So there you go. Those are my top five tips for learning to run in the heat. And if you need to take it indoors, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you need to cut some workouts just because of dangerous temperatures or high UV index, there is nothing wrong with that either. The important thing is to listen to your body and do what is safe for you. Do you have any other tips about running in the heat? Why don't you let me know down in the comments below so that we can share them with each other. Don't forget while you're there to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Just click the button below. It doesn't cost you a thing and it keeps you up to date on all the running content that I have coming out all the time. You can also follow me on social media. All the links are down in the description. You can find me across all platforms under the name Running Geek Girl. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm so glad you could be here. Remember to laugh hard, run fast, and be kind. I will see you later.